Hi, I'm Mark McNulty, and I'm a results leader. You're listening to ResultsLeader.fm. Being a thought leader is easy. Getting results is hard. This show is for the results leader who lives and dies by their results. Here is your host and chief results leader, Jonathan Rivera. This is the only show on the internet dedicated to results. Welcome to another edition of Results leader.fm. Stoked that you're here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So happy to have you here. And I'm going to reward you. I'm going to reward you for being here with another amazing interview. Today, I have Hall of Fame business coach, Mr. Mark McNulty, who will show you how to design the self-sufficient business you love. Let's jump in. Mark, welcome to the show. Are you ready to rock this thing? I sure am, and thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Let's give our listeners a quick win. What book have you given most as a gift? The book I give most give as a client is it's a Dr. Seuss book, actually, and it's Oh, the Places You'll Go, and it's all about possibility and overcoming fears, other people's limiting beliefs and expectations, just reaching beyond that, going wherever it is you want to go. How do your clients take that when you give them a Dr. Seuss book? Some have actually heard about it. Some, I get a lot of strange looks and I say, trust me, at least half of Dr. Seuss's books were written just as much for the parents as they were the kids. Like all good writers, he wrote for, there's multiple angles and lessons to be learned out of all of them. And the things that we want to teach our kids as adults, we probably need to relearn those things too, because we've had all those lessons beat out of us by the system. Now I'm going to have to go back and reread this book. I've never had anybody say Dr. Seuss. That's the first one. Thank you for that. Starting on fire, man. So tell us a story of how an apparent failure set you up for later success? Well, a one was, well, the first one, the short, quick one was just getting laid off from my 20-year corporate career, getting downsized. That could have been, obviously, it felt like a failure after 20 years. But honesty, I wasn't cut out. I all heard of the Peter Principle. I'd risen to the level of my incompetence in corporate. It was freeing, and I was able to take uh, the money they paid me to leave, start a business, doing what I love. And then just in, and in that business, I was wildly successful, very successful my first three years. Got to the point where I was you know, buying myself my trophy car because I'd hit my sales targets and all that, celebrating life. And then six weeks later, I'd lost two-thirds of my clients. What happened? I got really full of myself. I'm successful. I'm a great coach, great everything, and great business owner. And I stopped coaching my clients. One by one, they fired me because I stopped being a, the coach I needed to be. So it was about me. Led to some soul searching. Went back and uh, I had had a coach earlier, but had stopped because I didn't need a coach anymore. I was good enough, right? Basically, when I stopped growing, and so my clients grew right past me. Big lesson was I have to constantly be learning. I have to constantly be better. It can never be about me. If I want to be a great coach, it can't ever be about me. It's got to be about my clients and their needs. And I need to be there for them. The rewards will come if I do, but you know, my job isn't, isn't about Mark. It's, it's about my clients. How'd you figure that out, man? How'd you figure it out? If you were so full of yourself, you must have not even seen it. Well, I, I had, to have a, had to pay a coach to poke me between the eyes a couple of times. It took a while to even think I needed a coach that I, because I was sure it was the client's problem and not me, but talked to enough other coaches, mentors, friends, and it became really obvious that I was the problem. I had some good friends, people in the industry that didn't pull their punches, basically held up the mirror for me to look in the mirror and see, so I could see who the problem was. And it, it wasn't the clients. Never, it never is. How'd that feel? At first, it felt really bad. I fought it. I'm a recovering engineer and I'm used to being right. Spent 20 years being right about everything. So it was humbling. It was a hard lesson to learn. And I had to depressing and it was financially depressing, but I, I had to start all over from scratch and build myself back up, get back so to where I was confident that I could go out and really help people, put them first. I had a lot of, a lot of coaches, a lot of friends really helped me through that, hold my feet to the fire, but also with empathy. And I had to kind of change who I was as a person a little bit, take my identity as a coach to the next level so I could be there for my clients without ego and with more humility. What would you say is the most worthwhile investment that you have ever made? 
it's the investment I made in myself at that time. I could not afford a coach at that point. I was living on credit cards because I'd lost all my clients, but I invested in myself. I had to swallow hard and do that, but I came out the other end a better person, a better spouse, a better dad, a better businessman, and a better coach. I needed to be better at all those so that I could deliver on my mission to my clients. That was my, that was by far the biggest investment I've ever made. I went to a conference in Ireland, in Dublin, that I could not afford to go on. My coach said, Mark, you have got to be there. The world's top coaches are going to be there. You need to spend three days with the world's top coaches and get your head right. So I did it. Haven't looked back. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? This was a tough one. I fought this one for years because the engineer in me was kind of like, blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's nice for, for people to feel that way, but it's a gratitude journal. I hit a little rough patch with my partner, business partner five years ago, and things snagged up and I started getting very negative. And so again, my coach, like Mark, remember that, that gratitude journal I've been trying to get you to do and I have let you get away without doing well, you got to start doing it now. And I just thought, I just, but I tell you, I, I was shocked at what that did for my, just my sense of calm. I also started meditating then, learned mindfulness, just started, stopped looking at the negative things with my business partner and started looking at the positives and realizing all the great people I had in my life, all the great opportunities I'd had in my life. And just, just reminded me to be more appreciative when you're in a small business. It's, it can be lonely at times. It, you forget about all the great things in life when you don't do that. So starting to write in a gratitude journal, that, that really, and just journaling in general, just really changed things and helped me get back to being that positive influence for myself first and then so that I could then be a positive influence for others. But if I can't be a positive person, then I, I can't help other people be live positive lives. So that one really, that, that trick, and I fought that for years. I love the gratitude journal. I'm, I'm down with it. Glad that you brought that here. Let's have some fun. What are some bad recommendations you hear in your area of expertise? Oh, boy. One of my pet peeves is that, and this is on the business side, you know, long-term contracts. There's coaches out there that you won't commit to an 18-month ironclad, you've got to pay me even if I'm a lousy coach contract, and you're not fully committed to your business. I think that's horrible advice. I do everything month to month. If I'm not, if I'm not earning, I earn the right to be your coach every week. If I'm not doing a great job, fire me. And if I'm doing a great job, you'll stick with me forever. Another one is, and especially we're going into looks like the start of another recession of some size sometime in the next quarter or two is cutting back on marketing. Stop spending on marketing. And that's the absolute worst advice. That's just from coaches, consultants that don't understand the life cycle of business and the four seasons of business when now's the time they're to be ramping up marketing. People confuse the marketing expense as an expense to cut versus marketing as an investment. But I see lots of lots of terrible, terrible marketing advice from people that just don't understand the thought process of thinking of marketing like an investment instead of just money you spend. I see just terrible, had a client recently that had had upped their SEO marketing from 2,000 a month to 6,000 a month at the recommendation of a consultant because they weren't getting enough leads. They weren't paying attention to any of their metrics and return on investment. The extra 4,000 a month was just wasted money. It wasn't the problem, but they just, nobody was looking at it from a return on investment perspective. Um, at $2,000 a month, they were, they were getting a, a fantastic return on investment and they'd maxed out the number of their capacity. So spending more money made the phone ring a little bit more, but they didn't have any excess capacity. So it was all wasted because they, they couldn't serve people. So I see so many out in this space that just don't understand all of the aspects of marketing and marketing investment versus marketing expense and how to, measure, how to actually pay attention to the return on investment in marketing and keep doing it if it's working, as long as you've got capacity. Is there, I mean, it's funny that you mentioned this because a couple interviews ago, we had somebody on the show that said that marketing wasn't as important as getting, I don't know how he put it, but he said that marketing is sold as a cure-all for problems. So is there a difference between good marketing and bad marketing, or is it all the same? There's definitely a, a difference and all the books, you know, out there, all the literature says 80% of marketing doesn't work. So you got to find a 20% that works. And I guess I view marketing as there's advertising, which is a form of marketing, but then there's marketing. 
People also confuse branding. That's another one where I see bad advice. You need to rebrand. Small business doesn't need a new logo every three years. Um, they don't need new colors. They don't need a new website every three years. That's just silly because in a small business, you are your brand. You are your brand. No one cares about your logo or your colors, but it's finding the right message. So marketing is really about when I talk marketing to my clients, first thing is it's always the message. It's the message that matters. Your, you know, our prospective clients want to know, you know, it's W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? And if we don't have a great message, all the marketing and advertising in the world won't matter. It's the messaging at the end of the day that's the most important. And then it's figuring out where is your target market and using the appropriate marketing or advertising methods so that your target market sees your message and understands how it applies to them. Marketing, sales and marketing haven't changed 10,000 years. The only the tools we have at our disposal have, but selling to people is selling to people. It hasn't changed a bit in 10,000 years. So it's just uh, we have different media available to us now to reach our audience. But it's the message. That's where so many people go wrong in marketing is if you don't have the message right, you can spend all the money on you, uh, in the world on advertising and marketing and it, it won't help. All right, we're about to get into the results portion of the show. But before we do that, I got to ask you, have you shared the show? If you're digging what I'm laying down here, then I want to ask you to share this show with somebody who will find it helpful. Share it on your social medias. Use the hashtag ResultsLeaderFM and I'll be looking for you out there. Thank you. Mark, why do results matter? So the basic one is, so the simple answer is, in business, results are how we pay the bills. The bigger answer that I teach is that, and I've got a whole ladder of this, but the quality of your results and whatever your endeavors are, that's what leads to a quality of life. We all have a quality of life we want to live. We want it for ourselves, for our families, our friends, maybe our communities. There's a quality of life we're strength for. It's the quality of our results that leads to that. And then the things that lead to quality results are our quality of our actions and decisions. We've got a whole ladder to find for that. If you want to have a good quality of life, and everybody has a quality of life they aspire to, whether they realize it or not. If you're not sure what yours is, I always tell people, sit down and think about, you know, what do you want your life to be like? We always start off in our engagements with a couple hours of what do you want your life to look like five years from now? So we can make your business support that. Do people know? Do they know what they want their life to look like? Most don't. So that's why it takes a couple hours. We, you know, we, we take them through a process where we ask a lot of questions and help them fashion that. We get the spouse involved. It's a couple. We get the spouse or the, you know, the partner involved because business is too hard to just do it without a purpose in the end. What's the end? Why are you putting your blood, sweat, and tears into this? What do you want your life to look like? Do you want to leave a legacy? Or is this just a means to pay the bills or it's got to be more than that. Owning a business is too hard to not get some kind of result in your life that you can enjoy later on. It's just too hard. I agree with that, man. So let's think about your business. What area of your business would you like better results? So for me, it's lead generate marketing, lead generation. We just recently expanded territory. So it's getting our message out and reaching the right people. It's COVID when everybody went virtual for two years kind of changed how we connect and communicate and meet people. This year, 2022 has been most a lot of in-person, but our major marketing for our clients is networking and referrals. And so a lot of those groups disappeared in 2019, 2020 and haven't come back. So it's finding, we started our own group. We're starting some of our own issues, but it's connecting with the right people that are back in the mindset of, grow in their business. They're successful. There's a lot of those successful businesses, they kind of went underground for a couple of years. And so being able to reach back out and touch them again, and so that we can introduce ourselves and make sure people are aware of the options they have. We're one, there's other coaches, consultants out there that are options as well, but just making sure that they understand what their options are, that we're one of them and how we believe we're different and better and whether or not we're a good fit for them. We're not a good fit for everybody, but Marketing is always the message and is our message resonating with our audience and 
the number of clicks on our website, the number of incoming calls, the number of meetings we have, those are all our measures of how effective we are at messaging. So it's just building up that reputation so that people can know us and trust us because to be their coach, they have to be really confident and trust us to share all that personal information, failure, success, so that we can help them. That takes building up a lot of trust, getting that message out and just being there so that people can see us and experience us, get to know, like, and trust us. What results are you most proud of? First, is a couple clients. So last year, our clients created uh, 70 jobs locally, over 3 million in additional profit put back into the community and employees and 70 new jobs last year. And then one of my clients was won the Manufacturer of the Year Award at a business conference called BizX. Very proud of Clark and what he and his team did to win Manufacturer of the Year. And that was awesome. But my client rewards. And then I usually don't brag about myself, but I was uh, a couple weeks ago at uh, the Action Coach Conference, I was inducted into the Action Coach Hall of Fame. That was quite a surprise. Really proud of that because that's a combination of criteria are kind of sustained success with my business, client retention. And the other part is community involvement, getting, giving back to my local communities and also to the Action Coach community, Action Coach franchise, and we're in 80 countries, over 1,200 coaches. So I'm the chairman of the board of the Action Coach Foundation this year. So I put a lot of time into being part of the community because I believe that's part of my mission is to give back both locally and then globally to the Action Coach Foundation. And that was just a real special moment. My my wife was there and my eldest sister was there with me and couldn't have been better timing. And that was a fun event. That's amazing, man. Congrats. Any parting thoughts you want to share with the results leaders who are listening to us right now? My number one thought that I'm telling everybody about their business and that that you can pass on to your clients is treat your business as your number one client. If you're not taking care of your business, then you won't be in a position to help others. We all sometimes get too caught up in, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. And it's like, no, you have to put yourself first so that you can actually be there for the people you want to lead, for the people you want to influence, for the people you want to help. Um, and sometimes you just have to make yourself your number one client. That's powerful, man. I know folks listening will want more from you. Where can they get it? They can email me directly at markmcnulty at actioncoach.com, or they can go to my website, which is Action Coach Bluegrass. That's a mouthful. I'm in Louis based in Louisville, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. So it's actioncoachbluegrass.com. There's an easy button there to hit to schedule a time to get on my calendar. I'll talk to any business anywhere in the world for 30 to 60 minutes. My mission is to help. And so if somebody's got a question or needs a brainstorm on something, we'll schedule an hour strategy session. We don't make sales pitches. We just help. Our mission is to help as many, any business owner willing to reach out. And we simply want to be there for anybody willing to take that risk, raising their hand and saying, I need help with something. We'll be there for them. I dig it, man. Thank you for hanging with us, Mark McNulty. Thank you, results leaders, for tuning in. Another episode is in the can. That is a wrap for another edition of Results Leader.fm. If you are out there getting results for your clients and you want to be featured on the show, go to Results Leader.fm now and apply to be on the show. And if you love what you're hearing, share the show, give us a rating and review, do anything to help us get the message out there. Thought leadership is easy, but results leadership is hard. We'll catch you on the next one. This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com.